Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now in today's video, we're gonna be dealing with the Chrysler 3.2 and 3.6 liter Pentastar engines. And the topic that we're gonna be covering is a specific code that causes a check engine light. And it's a very common one that you'll see from time to time if you work on these. So make sure to tune in and check it out. Now having worked on a lot of these engines over the years, it seems that this code is going to come up eventually. Not a matter of if, but just a matter of when. And that specific code that we're talking about today is P0128. The P designation is for powertrain, and the 0128 has to do with thermostat rationality. Now what's going on is the powertrain controller is looking for the coolant temp to increase over a specific amount of time and fall within a certain range. Now if it doesn't meet that criteria, then eventually the check engine light's going to come on. Now, over the years, we've learned that there are three possible causes, one of them being the most common, but nonetheless, we're going to talk about all three of them in this video. Now, being that we're dealing with the coolant system, the first thing you need to check is the coolant level. That can definitely affect the coolant temp reading if we've got a loss of coolant and we've got air in the system. Now, the best time to check that is when the coolant is cold, which ideally would be the first thing in the morning after it's been sitting overnight. Now, if you don't have that option, definitely let it sit for as long as possible Turn the key on, check your gauges, make sure the coolant temp's as low as you can get it, and be cautious when removing that radiator cap. Then we wanna check the level inside. If it's full, then great, we'll move on to the second item. If it's low, then at that point, we need to address whatever's leaking, repair that, and that may or may not fix our coolant temp issue. Now, another possible cause for the P0128 has to deal with the software level in the powertrain control module. Now Chrysler's put up some software updates over the years to help address it. Uh, they believe that somewhere in the programming or some of the specs that they're looking for, things were kind of out of whack, so they've kind of changed it up to where hopefully it would address it and stop that code from coming up. And as a Chrysler technician, we were required to do that update first before making any repairs. And what I've learned over the years is that it seems that if we did the software update, they would still come back because it wasn't an electrical issue or a software issue or even a coolant level issue. And that's what's gonna bring us to step three. Again, there's software updates for these vehicles. It doesn't apply to every one of them and you don't know until you hook up to the vehicle with the scanner, see what the current software level is and see if the bulletin applies. If a vehicle comes into the shop or my bay that I'm working in, I will make sure that software update gets done nonetheless, even though I'm probably gonna be moving on to the third most common cause that I've seen for this. Now, it's not too often that you get a code that in the description is the failed component. A lot of times you'll see people come in, they've got O2 sensor related codes, they went to the parts store, they said it needed O2, they put an O2 sensor on it. Same thing with gas caps. They'll put a gas cap on because of the gas cap light and usually that does not fix the problem. Diag is required. But I've learned that in 90 plus percentage of the time, the thermostat is the failed component for the thermostat rationality code. Now the thermostat is part of an assembly, it comes with the housing, it's not your typical thermostat we've all learned about over the years. Fundamentally it is, but how it's actually in the housing and how it's part of it is completely different. So let me show you. Now in a Chrysler 3.2 and 3.6 liter Pentastar engine, the thermostat assembly is going to be bolted to the front of the timing cover, closest to the left side cylinder head on the driver's side. It's a plastic housing held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. And there it is. Now, this thermostat isn't removable as far as how a traditional one is. We don't just pull it out, put a new one in, put a new seal on, put the cover back on. A portion of the thermostat, or at least what retains it in there, is part of the assembly. This literally would come out in pieces. It's not one part. So when you go to order it, the way I recommend getting it is with the assembly, and I prefer the Mopar one over the aftermarket. Another issue that you can find with not only this thermostat set in a code is, you can get a coolant leak right here, almost right there where that plastic dot is. You'll see the crusted up buildup from the antifreeze as it's drying. So it's another telltale that you need to replace the assembly. Again, you can buy these separate, but I don't recommend it. 
and preferably I'd go in with the Mopar replacement. Uh, to me it's a much better quality. Yes, this part failed, but they've revised it numerous times. And in this video, we're not showing how to replace it, but I wanna show you what it looks like. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a failed one so you can see part of the problem that comes up. Now, since the first of the year, I've accumulated six of these thermostat assemblies. Now, one of the common things, like I already mentioned, is you'll see on some of these, we've got that little bit of crust starting to build up. There's one there. We've got a lot more on this one. This one actually looks almost like a hairline crack, as well as this one's even worse. That's one of the issues with this. Not only will it set a check engine light, it will actually cause a coolant leak. Now, it's not a big coolant leak. You will see crust buildup, but nonetheless, it has a weakness in that design or that casting to where it's prone for right there in that general area. Now, a cool thing about the assembly, it's got a bleeder. So anytime you're dealing with the coolant system on that 3.2 or 3.6 Pentastar, you can open this up and you can get all the air out because it's on the other side of the thermostat. So we're not waiting for the thermostat to open. We can actually purge all the air out from this side by backing off on that. The only issue is it's made out of plastic, so if you over tighten it, you can possibly break it. Another thing is, depending on the engine, usually the Wranglers, you can't get directly on it, so you're having to do something like a pair of pliers, and again, we're, we're biting down onto something plastic, which usually you don't wanna do with pliers. They are unique to the vehicle. Some will have different length radiator hose necks, as you can see on that one and then they will be positioned slightly different depending on the vehicle it's in. Now I wanna show you one here that has failed. You can actually look real close. And this one right here, you can see the edge of this thermostat is not fully seated with the plastic housing. I can actually shove a pocket screwdriver down in there and I shouldn't be able to. It should be seated deeper down in the cavity here like this one is. This one sits down way down there past the plastic. This one's actually up above the plastic. So this one has failed in the open position. It's very intermittent on some of these. Some of these they may fail one time, cause a check engine light, and then the check engine light go off, and then they're back to working fine. But it's just a matter of time, like I mentioned, that it will fail again. Now they do separate, like I told you. You can push down, take it apart. Comes out in three pieces. But personally, I don't recommend replacing it that way because who's to say there's not an issue with this plastic housing? Maybe it's somehow swollen, something causing that thermostat to stick. Uh, they do sell them. It's out there on the market. So you do have options if you want to buy one. But if it was my personal vehicle or one of my customers, I wouldn't. I'd replace the entire assembly because, again, remember, not only does it set a check engine light, but it can leak. So that's what's the most common cause for the P0128. If you get the code, perfect time to replace the thermostat housing and your antifreeze at the same time. If you got a lot of mileage, you might wanna go ahead and throw some radiator hoses on it while you've already got one in off. So summarizing everything up, if you get the P0128 code, no coolant leaks, then you need to go ahead and replace that thermostat assembly. Yes, you could do a software update, but if you take it to a repair shop or dealership, that could be anywhere from 50 to 100 plus dollars to have that done. My money is gonna be on the assembly. Replace that and you shouldn't have any problems. Typical price for one of these is averaging around 60 bucks, give or take. You throw some antifreeze in, you're pushing up around the 70, 75. And depending on where you go with labor, it could be close to the 200 to $300 range to have a thermostat assembly replaced. It's not a big job. It should be something you should be able to take on. Just take your time. Again, this video is not for how to replace it, but to talk about the code and the most common cause for it. Coolantly, possible software update, which usually doesn't do anything. And the third one being, majority of the time, the thermostat assembly. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video or anything Chrysler, Dodge, or Jeep related, you could leave something in the comments below. Also in the description, if you shop on Amazon, which pretty much everybody does these days, there's a generic Amazon link. Click on that, make that your Amazon homepage, and anytime you buy something, you will be helping to support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for always watching.